Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocturne Knives. Uh, today, I'm going to be coming at you with a quick first impressions video. We're uh, going to try and get through this quickly. This is not my knife, it's a customer's knife. I'm going to be sending it out tomorrow or uh, Monday. It's Friday right now. I'm going to send it out Saturday, Monday, um, depending on what he when he prefers it to get there. And I just finished sharpening it up. I just want to film this first impressions real quick so I can get this out the door back to him. Daniel, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate you. Uh, before we get into it, don't forget to go down below this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you like knives, sharpening content, anything like that. I would definitely appreciate it. And let's get into it. So this is a Microtech Borka collaboration stitch. It is an automatic knife. It's made by Microtech and designed by Borka Blades. I don't know who the guy behind, I don't know his name, but um, a Borka Micro, Microtech collab. Very interesting knife. It's <laughs> very large, very ridiculous in a lot of ways. I'll fire it out here. So, boom, this thing comes out with a, an immense amount of authority. Here you can see it is a, a really big knife. It, it's quite a large knife, especially in the handle department. It's kind of got those Spyderco uh, ratios going on, blade to handle. The handle is made of aluminum, and it's got this uh, tri-texture, I don't know what... Microtech likes to call it, but this machine texture on it actually feels quite nice. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. It's decently grippy. It's not too rough. I like it. Um, big oversized firing button here that's been milled with that kind of cross hat or that file pattern. I don't know what you call that. And the spring is immensely strong on this. There you go. Full length backspacer. I think the backspacer is made of titanium. I've got a magnet here. Well, it's either made of aluminum or titanium. I have no idea. I would guess tie. These screws. No, the screws are actually stainless. I don't know. It's probably tie. That'd be my guess, but who knows. I want a pocket clip. The pocket clip is steel. Interesting. And then the blade steel is right here, M390. So let's get into the first impressions. We're going to talk about what I like, what I don't like. That's it. We'll get out here. So likes, uh, this thing has <laughs> some mad style, like, like really mad style. I mean, look at that. Look at the profile and the blade shape with this, ma this massive harpoon and the giant swedge. And mm, it's just got, it's, it's got it going on, you know, the big opening hole, well, it's not an opening hole, the big hole in the blade, um, the handle just with its dramatic curves and everything, and then the immense size, quite, uh, quite a unique knife. Um, oh, also, while I'm thinking about it, we'll do a couple size comparisons real quick. Okay, we'll do a few size comparisons really quickly, get this, open it up. I'll also give the, you the overall length. Our, our overall length here is coming in at eight and a half or so. You know, I actually, ex I expected that to be longer. It's actually only about eight and a half inches. So not insane. Our blade length overall right at three and a half cutting edge coming in just under three. And then handle length is going to be about hmm, four and a quarter ish. So there's our overall size, and we'll get real quick a behind the edge measurement, just because I always like to do that. Okay, as usual, you're not going to be able to see what the caliper says, I'm sure, but it says, okay, I can't even see what the caliper says. Okay, we're coming in at just under 20 thousands. About 19, 20 thousands, which is not too bad, actually. That's that's pretty reasonable. Don't mind that thickness at all. Especially for such a large kind of overbelt type of knife. 
So a couple size comparisons here. We'll get out a classic PM2 and pair of three combo. That's what we're looking at. I'll put them pivots to pivots. There you go. So overall length is going to be pretty close to the pair to the PM2. Um, pair of three is definitely a lot smaller. And let's see, overall length, blade length is almost identical on the PM2. The stitch has maybe an extra quarter quarter inch in the handle, and we'll see. Check thickness. So, yeah, uh, the stitch is a little bit thicker than the PM2, to say the least. And profile in the pocket, it is amazingly a fair bit wider than the PM2 as well in the pocket. So this thing in your pocket, it really, it takes up a lot of space. I've slipped it in and out of my pocket, and it is a, quite a chunk in your pocket. You will know you're carrying this. Uh, we'll put it up next to a Protec Malibu, just another popular knife. You can see the Malibu is much smaller overall, but not too far off in blade and actually a little bit more sharpened length. Then we've got a TRM Atom. This is definitely very close in overall length. The Atom coming in at just over 8 8 inches, 8 and an eighth, and the Bork at 8.5. So we're getting pretty close. Um, pretty much the same blade length, but about a quarter inch more cutting edge in the Atom. I'll put it up next to another long one. This is the Spyderco Native Chief. And the Native Chief now is finally longer than the Borka. It's got probably three quarters of an inch on the Borka. Coming in at just over nine. Yep. Here's another thick one. Got the Hinder X18 non-flipper. This is actually a pretty decent comparison right here. These two knives, pretty similar blade length, very similar cutting edge length. Um, our handles, the Bork has got an extra eighth inch maybe thickness. Still, the Borka is significantly thicker than the Hinderer. But they're not too dissimilar. The Borka is definitely heavier. I don't feel like getting my scale, so you're not getting the weight. You'll have to go look that one up. Feel The Borka feels maybe quarter ounce heavier. It's actually not all that big a difference. Those two are fairly comparable. And then I'll do one more comparison. Here we got the Koenig Arius, another kind of long thick one and here we go overall length is right in line with the stitch yep coming in at just about nine or sorry what eight and a half not nine eight and a half overall so right in that same length territory an extra quarter half inch of cutting edge and thickness wise this is the closest to the Borka now, but the Borka definitely still has it, especially when you take into account these raised pivot areas. Okay, there are some comparisons. Now we'll move into the likes and dislikes. So the styling, definitely like it. Um, very unique, very aggressive, very fun. Uh, the next thing I like is the action. This thing fires like a son of a bitch. I mean, you press this button, and it absolutely slams out. I'll hold it like this and you can see it jump. I mean, it, if you're not holding on to this with a bit of force, it would fling itself out of your hand. This is a knife that would do that. So you kind of got to be careful when you're opening it. Uh, next thing I like, actually the ergos are pretty solid on this, especially when you get up here in this choil. Your finger locks in here in the choil, your thumb goes right here onto the harpoon, the rest of your fingers just kind of wrap around 
and you feel really secure, really locked in. You've got a lot of control up here. Pinch grip feels pretty good. You can get up here way onto the blade. And actually, if you wanted to, you can get the entire edge down onto a surface. Say you're cutting some rope onto a surface, something like that. The whole edge, you can get surface contact, which is cool. Uh, next, this thing is, uh, the build quality is excellent on this. Centering is perfect. Um, Lockup is excellent. I mean, absolutely nothing. And all the machining and everything feels really high quality. The hardware feels high quality. I've not taken this apart, but looking at it, that's definitely nicer. Nice hardware, really big, oversized. It's cool, and then all the, the jimping that's milled in this pattern, really well made, definitely a very well made knife. All right, and then lastly, I actually like the blade a lot. Um, it's pretty thick. It looks like 165, 180, something like that, but it comes down to a pretty decent thickness. It's got a high enough grind and then you can see at the tip, decently thin. It's actually, it would be pretty nice for cutting. I, I think it would perform just fine. And it's got this big choil, which made sharpening so nice. This choil is excellent. Makes it super easy to get all the way down on the edge. And this edge came out really nice. It's a bit of phone book paper. Yeah, the edge edge came out really well. The sharpening went the sharpening went just fine. Steel felt felt good on the stones. It was all good. All right, those are the likes. Let's move into the dislikes. So first of all, this knife is an absolute pain to carry. Like I, I did not carry this to be clear. I just put it in my pocket a few times, but it is a, a brick in your pocket. It's wide this way. It's thick this way, it's heavy, and it, it doesn't carry that deep. Here's your pocket clip, and also the pocket clip kind of sucks. Uh, these Microtech clips with the stupid divot there, it just catches on your pocket as you're trying to put it in and out. I don't get it. I don't get this divot here. It doesn't work. See, look at the clearance under there. There's no clearance under there. So it, it's a bear, an absolute bear in your pocket. This isn't really a good knife to carry. Um, next, the blade stock could be thinner. I, I don't know if that's a huge complaint. It's just, you know, it's on the thick side. Could be thinner. That'd be nice. Um, next, the action is excellent on the open, but on the close, it's quite difficult, actually, to get it to close one-handed. So open is no problem, but to get it closed, you have to get it here and then put, put, push it down with your index, shuffle your hand up, get your thumb on there, and at that point, you're just kind of grabbing onto anything you can with your fingers in this weird little distorted claw kind of grip until you can finally push it closed. It's just not a very easily one-hand closed folder. You can do it. But it takes some fine motor skills, it takes some hand strength, and a lot of dexterity. You definitely could not do this in gloves. Um, if your hands were cold or slippery, I would be quite quite scared to try and close this. There's no way. Um, really, this is a, a two-hand closer. I wouldn't recommend doing one-handed close most of the time. So, you... That's one of my biggest dislikes, is how difficult it is to close with one hand. Two hands, it's fine, but one hand is really, really difficult. Uh, another thing I don't like, the end of this clip sticks up pretty high, and when you go into this uh, saber grip here, it just pokes into your hand just a little bit right here. If that were just a little bit lower, or more flat, then it'd be more comfortable. So there's just a little nitpick. 
And I think that's all I have. And uh, we'll move on into our conclusions. So overall, I, I do actually like this knife quite a lot. It's very cool, um, very unique. You definitely don't see many knives like this. And getting to handle it, sharpen it, and do, an, do everything has actually kind of made me want to get one. Even though it's totally ridiculous, terrible in pocket, um, really difficult to close one-handed. You know, besides all of that, in spite of all of that, it's really, really cool. And I actually do like this knife a lot. Um, so if the design speaks to you and you can get over the two-handed closing and how massive it is, then, yeah, I can recommend this. It's it's a really cool knife. It's really fun, really unique. All right, there is there are my first impressions of this knife. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it interesting. I'll leave you with a question. What do you think? Is the stitch your cup of tea, or is it absolutely not for you? Because I feel like this design and this knife overall is kind of polarizing, just with the size and the uniqueness of the design. It seems like one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. So drop me a comment. Do you love it or do you hate it? I'd love to know. And please don't forget to go hit that like button, subscribe button if you like sharpening content, knives, stuff like that. I would really appreciate it, and I will catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.